Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to come and run my mouth and talk about the people. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get into this mess. So, you know, now in 2024, when, you know, the boys and girls, non-binary, non-gender conforming folk, when we start to unfollow people, that's a very big deal, <laughs> okay? When you unfollow someone on social media, honey, it's real. If you want to know it's real, unfollow somebody on social media, okay? Um, it appears Young Miami has unfollowed Diddy. Listen. Someone said this online. It wasn't in on my page or, you know, it wasn't on one of my videos, but it was, I forgot what blog it was on. Someone said that Young Miami has made her brand about Diddy. And I sat there and I thought about it. And I said, this is, that's, that, that's what happened and this is what's going on with Carisha. Carisha met this man and because Young Miami, Carisha is the same person. Young Miami is her stage name, Carisha is her government name. I know some people may not know that. So if I say Young Miami or, Car or Carisha, I'm talking about the same person. So you have Young Miami who meets Puff Daddy. I don't know how they met. I don't know where they met. I don't know. I don't know if it was at one of the FOs. I don't know. Okay. Um, and I think that because Diddy is a man of a certain age, and Carisha was this young city girl. I think that he wanted to attach himself to someone who was hot and popping at the time. And on top of that, Young Miami doesn't give me, um, as much as she tries to give this, you know, I'm a city girl. <laughs> I'm a, you know, I run these. I don't think she was over there running no Puff Daddy, right? So I think she could be a little bit naive and he could kind of string her along, wave a Chanel bag in front of her face and get her to do what he wanted her to do. But he meets Young Miami and Young Miami appears, and I'll be the first one to say, it appeared to me that Young Miami was getting the, 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 the long stick, right? Young Miami, it appeared until we started to... Once we found out what Cassie said, we was all, oh, girl, you better get your panties and run, girl. Um, but it appeared that Carisha was living the life, right? She was being flown out on private jets or she was being flewed out, right? Like she would say, she was being taken on shopping sprees, posting receipts that had, I think, like $100,000 receipts, right? She's going to the Chanel store, walking out with bags on top of bags on top of bags, She's going to the Met Gala and to all the parties. And now Carisha is hanging around the who's who of Hollywood and the black A-list stars, right? Carisha is in this thing. Carisha has her own podcast now. She's winning awards. It's like, oh, okay. Miss Thing is working it, right? And then all the stuff comes out. And now because Young Miami has pretty much boasted and bragged and shown this new life that she has been introduced to. Not to say that Young Miami was on food stamps before she met Pub Daddy, but I ain't see Carisha at no Met Gala. I ain't see Carisha with her own podcast. I ain't see, I ain't see Carisha on no private jets just flying around town. I ain't see Carisha, girl, popping out of the Chanel store with, girl, 15 bags wrapped around her arms. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying she was poor, <laughs> right? But now she's with Puffy. And now because she has made her life about showing what she has now been introduced to, now Carisha's trying to pull back. But it's going to be hard for Carisha to pull back because of the attachment that she has with Puffy. Carisha ain't the only girl. You know what I'm saying? There are other girls that were in the circle. Carisha was the one that he would bring out as his doll, right? Right? He was the, Carisha was the one who he would bring out to the red carpet events. Carisha was the one who he gave the jobs to, right? The podcast, down at Revolt, whatever. Diddy had a whole baby. 
Didn't nobody know about it until the baby got here. So we know there are multiple girls, but those girls is kind of like out of sight, out of mind. So nobody's talking about those girls because those girls are not in the picture. The girl who's in the picture is Young Miami. <laughs> so now Young Miami is trying to do whatever she can do to try to distance herself and remove herself from anything that has to do with Puffy, but she's going to have a hard time because of the life that she was living at one point and how she was attached to Diddy at one point. The other girl's not going to have a hard time as far as the public is concerned, right? Now, if the, if the feds go knocking on their door, then girl, good luck, girl, right? But as far as the public is concerned, that's why nobody is really talking about the other girls. It's because, girl, again, they're out of sight, out of mind. The reason why people, of course, we're talking about Cassie is because Cassie also was the girl on the red carpets. Even with the girl, what's her name? Virginia, Gina. I remember that interview that she did with Tasha K. The interview was years ago. When I say you years ago, that interview happened. I remember even telling my sister, girl, it's this girl. My sister watched the interview. I was like, girl, it's this, it's this girl who did the interview uh, with Tasha K. Hey, girl, she was, talking, she was talking a whole bunch of stuff. Girl, you need to listen to it, girl. Because I was like, oh, my God, this girl is really spill, spilling tea. Um, but anyway, so, you know, with Cassie, I think that's another, you know, example. Cassie was the girl on the red carpets. Cassie was the one who was always photographed. Cassie was the one who had the record deal. Cassie was the one who was in the movies, right? So now we see the video. It's not like other people don't care about, well, some people don't, but because Cassie was the famous one. So uh, again, we're not, the conversation, it should involve the other girls if something has happened to them. Well, not if, well, allegedly, if, girl. You know, allegedly, if something has happened to the other girls. Um, but again, the conversation is always going to re revolve around Carisha, Young Miami the most because she was the one who was in the pictures the most. And so now she's um, trying to unfollow Diddy and distance herself. And I don't know how, how, how it's going to work, especially with the public. Now, I'm not saying that Carisha has done anything illegal. I'm not saying she's done anything criminal. I'm not saying that. Now, they did say she was a queen of the South. <laughs> they say she was pushing pink Coca-Cola, baby. Um, they said she was picking that. She, they said she was pushing that pink stuff. I said pink. <laughs> Girl, that's some new type of shit. Okay. Um, but no, for real. You know, I I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know how it's gonna work for Carisha because anytime Puffy is mentioned and his name is not leaving the the, the, the the our mouths anytime soon, Carisha's name will be mentioned. It, it, that's just what it is. And the other girls' names won't be mentioned. The baby mama that he just had with the, the baby he just had with the girl. We don't know what she's doing, if he's if what he's doing to that girl, if he's doing anything right. We don't know what he could be doing to that girl. But no one is gonna talk about it unless she comes out and tells her story if she has a story to tell. Anyways, good shout out to Young Miami. Shout out, shout out to, uh, shout out to Young Miami. If you look good at that, all in videos and stuff. Mm. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly Rowland, Calandria. <laughs> that's who. That's that's that, See, they thought they was fooling with Kelly Rowland, but quiet as this kept, they got Calandria. Okay, they say that. Um, Kelly Rowland goes off on security guard at the Cannes film, uh, film Festival. Now, I'm going to play the video. Um, what it looks like Calandria is saying um, is don't talk to me like that. Now, <laughs> you know you know what I think is happening. <laughs> you know what I think is happening. Can I say something? Can I say something? <laughs> I think what's happening is Jasmine Crockett, after she checked that white lady, you got Kelly checking the next white lady. Girl, the black girlies said, ain't no white lady. Girl, ain't nobody talking to me crazy. 
Girl, if you was a black lady, I might give you a pass today because I know, girl, you probably, you know, something probably, something could have happened today. But girl, the, 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 the white woman, you're going to watch your tone. You're going to watch your tone with me. Now, how you talk to everybody else, I don't care. But when you talk to me, you're going to talk to me like you got some sense, <laughs> okay? Kelly Rowland, as male identified as she is, and as much as she will put her cape on for Chris Brown, Kelly, you thought I forgot? I ain't forgot, girl. Kelly Rowland is not a problematic person. <laughs> Kelly Rowland has been in the business far too long, right? Um, for us not to have heard diva stories pertaining to Kelly Rowland. I'm going to play this video and then y'all let me know what y'all got out, got out of it. Um, you have to watch her mouth and then you can see. To me, it really appears Kelly was taking pictures, right? And you have, I guess, the security or the people who are in charge of kind of like, you know, making sure that the celebrities go, <laughs> go to the spot where they need to be. Um, Kelly was taking pictures. I'm sure people were calling her name. You have a man on the stairs who's showing her where she needs to go. She's talking to some white women. I think people are still calling her name. Then that's when a white woman walk up and puts her hand in front of Kelly like, girl, no, you're not taking no more pictures. She steps on Kelly's dress. Kelly says, baby, you stepped on my dress. Well, I don't know if she said, baby, you stepped on my dress. And then she told the lady, don't talk to me like that. Do not talk to me that way. The lady was trying to handle Kelly, basically. The lady was trying to handle Kelly. Kelly was just trying to take some of the pictures of girl, the girls who were screaming her name, and the lady was trying to handle Kelly. I'm not mad at Kelly. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. Girl, I get that we have to keep the we have to keep the show going. I get that you're here to make sure that, right, girl, you you lead us on the way, right? But you're not going to, you already stepped on my dress. You have your hand in front of my face like this, right? So you're blocking, you're blocking my view. You have, you stepped on my dress. You have your hand in front of my face. And now you're going to, now you think you're going to talk to me crazy all, all at the same time. Oh, baby, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. And you're a white woman. <laughs> no shade to the white women. You know, we love the white women over here, but I'm just saying, girl, and you a white woman. Oh, baby, you feeling yourself today. Girl, I will curse your ass out in the United States and I will cuss your ass out over here. Okay? I'm with Kelly. They've been trying to make Kelly seem, 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 seem like she a hood rat from Texas. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm with Kelly. Child, the people, you know, the people gonna say that Kelly is uh, a, a gutter snipe um, ghetto girl you know, <laughs> girl, hood rat from Texas. But I don't think, I don't think that Kelly was wrong in this. I could see how Kelly could very feel, very well feel disrespected. And it is what it is. Shout out to Kelly Rowland. Kelly, I want you, I need you to stop defending Chris Brown though. <clears throat> I'd rather you take Beyonce's note and don't say nothing. <laughs> okay. Anyways. So Monique backtracks her statement about Chelsea Handler having a similar experience to hers with Kevin Hart. The joke is on me. So Monique has retracted her previous statement regarding Chelsea Handler's alleged similarity and experiences with Kevin Hart after fans highlighted that the 49-year-old actress and comedian was in fact mocking her. On Monday, Monique posted a clip of Handler from Kevin's, uh, Kevin Hart's recent comedy special, for winning the Kevin Kennedy Hart, I'm sorry, girl. The girl, I, was, I was about to say Kennedy Davenport because I was thinking of the drag. It's a drag queen called uh, named uh, Kennedy Davenport. So I was about to say Kennedy Davenport, and then somehow uh, Ke uh, Kennedy Hart, uh, Kennedy Hart came out because then I started thinking about Kevin Hart. What I tell you, it'd be so much going on up here, girl. It'd be so much going on up here. 
um, the Kennedy Center Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. In the video, Handler shares a time when she told, when Kevin told her that he would put her in a movie. She then told Kevin that she wouldn't mind being in front of the camera or behind, and he responded, I got you. But to her surprise, a 44-year-old comedian never called back. Here's how great Kevin is, he said. Here's how great Kevin is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm misreading it, girl. It's late. Charge it to my head and not to my heart. Here's how uh here's how great Kevin is, he said. No problem, Chelsea, I got you. I just I'll just get you in a gig on my movie. I said, Great. Behind the camera, in front, I don't care. I'll direct it if I have to. He said he'd even feel he'd even help me fill out the paperwork. Handler said, I was so excited. He said, I got you. Chelsea, I got you. I got you. And that's when I learned that if I ask Kevin for a favor, you can always count on hearing these three words, I got you. And then you can count on never hearing uh, from him again. The Instagram video ended with a snippet from Monique, uh, Monique's appearance on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast. And remember when she spoke about um, um, Kevin who let her borrow um, some money in a time of need because she was out of work. Um, she also had a conversation with Kevin and uh, let me try to look up how much it was. It was a lot of money, y'all. Let me see. <clears throat> and he also said that, I guess they were gonna do like a project together. Um, but when she called to, I guess, get the project off of the ground, um, she'd never heard anything back from him. But she was grateful, I guess, for the money that he um, loaned her and that she did pay him back with interest. This is my problem. And y'all some of y'all may not know this. I think Kevin I think Kevin Hart is sneaky. I do. Um I just think he's a sneaky man. And I just think he's a sneaky man. But you know it's always a butt honey. Um when it comes to him and Monique, if I were Monique, Kevin couldn't say I'm sorry. If I were Kevin, Monique would not be able to say one letter to me. Not even a word, a letter. Because the truth of the matter is, while yes, it sounds like Kevin dropped the ball when it came to the project, right? Kevin probably had a misstep in his friendship with Monique, but it does not take away from the fact that Kevin Hart did something that daddy couldn't do, which was provide for your family. Kevin Hart is the reason why you did not have to go stand on a corner and try and tell a joke for $5. So yes, Kevin Hart was wrong, I guess, for not answering the phone when you called to do the project. But girl, Kevin Hart stepping in and giving you money to make sure that you could stay afloat to make sure that your kids could eat because your husband wasn't doing his job, wasn't doing his duties, wasn't doing the protecting and the providing, even though, girl, you call him daddy. <laughs> girl, shout out to daddy. And this is coming from somebody who loves Monique. I still follow Monique. Even when the stuff was happening with her son, right? I didn't think Monique was all the way 100% wrong. I just did not. Um... But in this situation, like even with her coming back and thinking that Chelsea, I guess, was taking a dig at Kevin, you still try to basically make it seem as though, see, look, 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 he did somebody else the same way when the joke was on you. And even if, even if this was a chance for Monique to say, look, 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 look what he did, I would think that Monique would just take it on the chin because again, this man stepped in and helped you when nobody else was. I think it comes across as selfish. I think it comes across as ungrateful. And I think it comes across as somebody who thinks that everybody owes her something. Let me see how much money he let her borrow.
Let me see if I can find it. I think it was like 200,000, 300,000. It was a lot. I can't find the I can't find the dollar amount, but whatever it was, it was a lot of money. Um, because Monique wasn't really Monique was blackballed, and we all know that Sydney can provide because Sydney counts on Monique to work. That's how you know Monique pays Sydney. She pays Daddy, right? So he takes a percentage of the cut because he's the manager, right? I mean, is that how it goes? So because Monique wasn't working, Sydney can work, and because Monique is the provider of the home, she couldn't provide. And Sydney was not about to go out there and get no and get no regular nine to five. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to see if I can find it. I can't remember. I cannot find. I'm, it's gonna drive me insane. I can't find it. I can't find the dollar amount. Okay, but it was a lot of money. Regardless, I don't give, I don't give them those five dollars. <laughs> okay, I don't give them five dollars. But no, girl, it was a lot of money. It was money that girl. Most people don't let people borrow, right? You know, in our world, we'll we'll let you borrow fifty. You know, twenty five. You know, maybe a hundred. When she started to get past a hundred, girl, I'm trying to figure out, girl, what's going on. You say you need two hundred dollars. You said you need twenty five dollars. Well, we ain't gonna pay me back, <laughs> okay? Girl, we damn sure ain't let nobody fall on two hundred thousand. <laughs> hey. Hey, so I actually found some audio. Um, I don't think it was two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. Um, I don't think she said a dollar amount, but we know it wasn't a we know it wasn't five or ten dollars, okay? So let's listen to what Monique had to say about Kevin in the Club Shay Shay interview. Now let me say that before we go. That goes away. Kevin Hart. Now you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yeah. Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. I do his um podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother, you're like my aunt, you're like my sister. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm going to reach out to Tyler. I appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further, because okay. I want to make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think that like my husband. Yeah. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That was, that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol. And we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world. Right. And was then. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us. He's going to partner executive use. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart's name on it, you already know what it is. Correct. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. In the mall says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave you a check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. 
So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then that two that two week period? Well, as soon as we got off the phone and they told us what well, Kevin manager David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, Hey baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol and they said Dave Becky called them up and said, You don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you okay though with this white man calling them up? Getting in between our relationship and something you said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. So that's what we're faced with. When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother, you said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was only up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Oh man, no one saying he's lying. No one ever said I was lying. It's so easy to discount and devalue because of what we look like. Right. However, when it comes to Tyler Perry, I will not allow you to discount or devalue because that is your voice on that audio. Mm -hmm. Remember on Good Times mm -hmm. when Penny's mother was whooping up on yeah. her and then and she had recorded it. Mm -hmm. that so anyway, that's the that's that that's that's her talking. Again, I don't think she ever said a dollar amount even in the full interview. Um, but nonetheless, it was, it was, a, a they were in a time of need and, um, he stepped up and he helped their family out. Yes, Kevin, um, you know, he should have picked up the phone. He should have called Monique back. Um, if that is someone who he looked up to or considered like a mother or aunt, especially when you start to describe your friendship, the person who's in the friendship with you using those words, I would assume that you would pick up the phone and be like, hey, aunt, this is why we can't do it, X, Y, and Z. But I think Monique also knows part of the reason why Kevin chose not to do it, because girl, girl, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get two of the most powerful black women in Hollywood, Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. Sure. You are going up against two of the most powerful black women in Hollywood, girl. It's sad to say if you if you don't what they say if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything. Um, maybe that's something that Kevin is not willing to fall for. Everybody got families to feed. Everybody got you know kids and wives and side chicks they got to take care of. Shout out to Kevin. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Bye, y'all.